preparedness takes capital. So worry about getting capital before you worry about anything else. Don't use your fear of the unknown as an excuse not to work your ass off today for your betterment and your preparedness. Your biggest risk is you. The potential for uh, bail-ins of brokerage accounts, there's an even more all-encompassing question that has more to do with the preparedness topic that we asked about earlier. William Mueller says, Rick, how about a worst case scenario that we live in an era where there is total upheaval throughout the world? How do we prepare or, and are you prepared for this possibility? I'd prefer not to discuss my personal preparedness, uh, although I do have some contingency plans for things getting worse than I might uh, otherwise expect. And the truth is that there's no way of telling how bad things might get or where they might get or, or where they might get bad. So the first part of my answer is I don't know and nobody knows. But one thing that for sure you should do is not pay some more on $5,000 to, to do a preparedness plan for you when he or she doesn't know anything about the risks that you might uh, face. I suggest that the uh, that the steps that were outlined in that wonderful out, uh, underground pamphlet available online, PT, had PT, uh, depending on how you choose to um, define it, uh, was perpetual traveler, uh, professional traveler, or prior taxpayer. Uh, and it involves internationalizing it. Our mutual good friend, Doug Casey, once said, your assets, your ass, and your passport should have three different countries on them. <laughs> uh, the idea being that you may or may not be able to choose a, a domicile that will be problem free. But if you have three of them, you have three times the chance of doing the right thing. I need to disclaim uh, the fact that I think that the probability of things going that wrong is extremely low. Uh, I'm an optimist. I think we get through all this idiocy. I don't think we get through all this idiocy unscarred, <laughs> but I do think that we get through this idiocy. I remember asking the same sort of question of my grandfather uh, in 1967 or 1968 when I was a teenager uh, and where as I became aware of inflation, I became nervous about it. But where also, you'll remember this country in 1967 or 1968 with civil disturbances, um, racial disturbances, uh, the fact that I, as a young kid in California, was preparing to go to university where I might have to wear a gas mask to get to class. And I remember that as a 16-year-old, this had sort of a profound impact on me. I remember talking to my grandfather about what I should do and how I should prepare. Uh, and he said, um, you need to remember that every generation has had these challenges. My generation had a few challenges, little things, the Depression, World War II. <laughs> you do the best you can, but you get ahead by being an optimist. You don't get ahead by being a, you know, by, <laughs> by being a pessimist. If you go down to the coast and look at those big yacht harbors, the big yacht harbors has been pointed out, the pessimists don't own any of those yachts. <clears throat> and the pessimists are the ones who aren't prepared at all. It, 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 preparedness takes capital. So worry about getting capital before you worry about anything else. And remember too, that the biggest risk you face is yourself. The biggest risk isn't Putin. He doesn't know you exist. The re biggest risk isn't Xi. He doesn't know you exist. Biden is a bigger risk than either Putin or Xi because he does know that you exist and he has direct lines on your pocket. But don't be afraid of Biden either. I can't tell you, uh, Dunnigan, how many people I've talked to who said, you know, what's the point? If I do something, Obama's going to steal it or, you know, Clinton's going to steal it or Trump is going to do this. Uh, don't use those people as an excuse to fail. Don't use your fear of the unknown as an excuse not to work your ass off today for your betterment and your preparedness. Your biggest risk is you. Again, if you could ask Rick how I could permanently borrow about 20 of his IQ points so that I could follow along without having to listen more than once. Brilliant man. <laughs> 
So is <laughs> that's very that's very kind. Donegan says, I told you in the past, you are welcome to pick my brain if you use a very small fork. Well, now that leads us to our last topic, and that is just having come off the in-person conference in Boca Raton, Florida, um, you uh, didn't divulge to people uh, who, like myself, who attended the conference that there'd be, but yet there's more. So could you talk to our viewers, both those who were able to attend the physical conference and those who were not able to attend the conference, what that more is and how quickly it's coming up here? Dunnigan, following the success, which thank you for contributing to, we enjoyed with the uranium boot camp some months ago, uh, we've decided that we're actually pretty good virtual conference presenters. One of the things that we really enjoyed about the uranium boot camp is that uh, investors from 33 countries who would have been unable or unwilling to attend a physical conference uh, were able to attend virtually. The consequence of that is that the live conference, which we had at Boca Raton, uh, has gone virtual as well. There were certain aspects that as a consequence of having a lack of time, we weren't able to do in Bo Boca Raton. So we're having a virtual conference, uh, which will feature uh, most, almost all of the recordings from Boca Raton, but will uh, feature several interviews that we didn't have time to do in Boca Raton. In particular, uh, they will feature, I think it's 35 interviews by me of every exhibitor, uh, every public company exhibitor at Boca Raton. One of the things that I've noticed in 40 years of investing, investment conferences is that most CEOs of major mining companies don't know how to give a coherent presentation. <laughs> it isn't that they're bad people, it's they're too busy running the company. They're too busy telling the story from their point of view. Uh, they don't understand well enough the mechanics of getting the story across to an investor audience. At the same time, most investors don't think that they have access to CEOs. Most of them are too polite or too nervous or too something to go up uh, and ask direct questions. So, uh, in order to facilitate the exchange of information from the investors to the CEOs, I took it upon myself to interview every single one of them uh, in, in terms of getting them to talk about the information that I think is important for high net worth retail investors to make a rational investment decision. You can learn several things from these interviews. Among other things, you can learn how to interview yourself because the idea that these CEOs aren't approachable is ridiculous. A good CEO wants nothing more than to talk about his or her company. It's their whole life. Think about asking a grandmother if she'd like to talk about her grandchildren. I mean, this is a no-brainer. But most people, nonetheless, don't have enough experience to know how to ask the questions. So watch these interviews with a with the point of view of learning how to ask the questions. Watch these interviews, too, because these are carefully selected companies. Remember, Dunnigan, the qualification to exhibit at most investor conferences is a check that cashes by the exhibitor. At our conference, our attendees have told us that the exhibitors are content, too. That means that we have to vet the exhibitors, and we vet them very simply. We don't let them exhibit if we don't own them and or do business with them. Uh, this doesn't guarantee, sadly, that <laughs> every exhibitor there has a share price that will rise, but it does guarantee that we know them well enough that we own them. So this is a very carefully curated group of exhibitors. It's important, too, for the people who attended the conference physically uh, to realize that they have lives and much of what they will have heard at the conference uh, and written down, partially at my instruction, uh, will be forgotten in the six weeks between the, con the conference and the time that the virtual conference debuts on August 12th. The point of that is that the virtual conference will be up for six months. Don't watch it once. Watch it two or three times. If there's a speech that made some sense to you, write down the part that makes sense. You believe that you're going to remember what you were told forever, but you're not. Uh, the paper boy is going to miss a throw and put a paper through your front window or something like that. There's something that's going to occupy your mind and throw away the information that was of value to you. Refresh your memory by taking notes. Refresh your memory by replaying the virtual conference. For those who weren't able to, to attend the conference. Uh, for whatever reason, the virtual conf conference is available to new attendees for $99. Uh, 
like every other investment product I have ever offered in 30 years of offering up investor education products, uh, if you don't believe you got your money's worth, email me and I'll give you a full, no questions asked refund. Very interestingly, uh, Dunnigan, on the uranium boot camp, the refund request we were got, we got, which were less than one half of one percent of total attendees, uh, involved requests for refunds around the fact that the information presented was too sophisticated, <laughs> which is to say that the user didn't have the ability to assimilate the information presented. Now, of course, we gave that person a refund because that person did not get the value that we charged them for the seminar. But it's important to note that the that the complaint was that the content was of too much value. And as a consequence of that, uh, the listener requested a refund. So one more time, wonderful exhibitors, world-class speakers. Uh, the fact that we had, uh, what, six or seven living legends who built billion-dollar companies, multi-billion-dollar companies from standing starts is worth the $99 alone. But if you subscribe and if you didn't think you got your money's worth, email me and I'll give you your money back.